Today we're going to take your ideas of community and inspired by our book, we are going to make some wall art. If you see art on a wall, it is either graffiti or a mural. Um, they are both considered public artwork because usually they are on a public wall, like walking down a street or on a sidewalk. The difference is usually graffiti is something that was made without permission and murals are usually made with permission. Greensboro has lots of murals. The murals are of all different kinds of styles. They allude to different images of culture that we have around us, things that are in our community, things that we see in everyday life or on our screens. Our artist's inspiration for our wall art is Jean-Michel Basquiat. He's an American-born artist of Haitian and Puerto Rican descent. He is best known for his graffiti starting in the 1970s and his neo-expressionist work in the 1980s. His artwork was a social commentary, which means that he made artwork based on his experience in his community and things around him. A lot of his symbols involved heads and crowns. There's lots of words, expressive lines that kind of show a kind of raw emotion of these characters or objects that he's drawing. He played with a lot of ideas of opposites that he experienced in his community. Um, that could be wealth versus poverty. That could be segregation versus integration. He also did artwork about things that were physically around him and around his community and also things that were inside of his head. This one specifically is a tribute to a musician named Charlie Parker, a jazz musician that Basquiat idolized. In this painting, the bird represents Charlie, based on one of his nicknames, and the lines represent the loose kind of rhythmic and spontaneous and wonderful complexities that jazz can be when you hear it. As we start to make our wall for our wall art, I want you guys to think about what community is to you. In the story, we learned about what people did in the community how they either gathered or interacted, how they spent their time, what they did, and then they showed it by making a mural that would express what makes up their community, what makes up their everyday lives. So what you're gonna need is a piece of paper. I have two because I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing this. And you want to cut it in half. So that way you have two pieces that are the same size. You want a folded hamburger style and either cut along that line, so you have two halves like that, or you can fold and fold again and carefully rip it. If you don't have scissors, you can rip it like this, or you can take something like a straight edge, hold it down and rip the paper. So like I said, um, I have two going on. You only need one set of papers. Pause now if you need to go get paper and a pencil. So my first paper I'm gonna have is gonna be my wall. It's gonna be horizontal, and I'm going to draw a few lines across it that are pretty evenly spaced. You can use a straight edge for this, but I'm making my bricks for my wall. I'm going to now make vertical lines on my first row to make the bricks. Now bricks aren't lined up evenly, otherwise they'd fall down. So I'm gonna offset them. So I'm gonna find a whole brick, and then in the middle bottom of that, my next row of seam is gonna be underneath. So find a whole brick, draw a line in the middle underneath. You can see that my first row and my third row look the same to make the offset even. So continue down the page, making sure that the vertical lines don't match up so that my brick wall is nice and solid. Now you can color in your brick wall however you'd like. I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing it. Um, if you have a pencil, you could maybe just make these lines a little darker and shade it in. Uh, brick walls come in all sorts of colors and all sorts of textures. Uh, for my first example, I'm gonna do crayon in the seams of my wall. And because I use wax for this brick wall, I'm going to do wax resist, which means that my crayon stays where it is. 
and I'm going to put very watery watercolor on top of it. So my crayon will show through because it has that property. Make sure if you're painting to wash your brush between colors and if you're using watercolors, you need to drip water into it first to activate the paint. I'm going very fast. I'm actually gonna add a different layer after this too. Um, I'm also just for fun gonna add some salt for texture, but like I said, you can do this any way you want. You could have just colored this with um, another crayon or markers. It is up to you how you wanna do your wall. Kind of have fun with the texture um, and have fun with maybe the color as well. Here's another example of a wall that you could do. I'm just gonna trace. And as you saw my last one, I was using a mess mat. Probably should use it here too. I'm just gonna trace my lines so that way they are a little bolder. And then after that, I'm going to take a crayon without paper and I'm going to rub the side of the crayon to create the color of my wall. So remember your wall can look however you'd like it to be. Just try to do the brick design. You can add different colors to it. Um, but our second piece of paper is actually what we're going to be making our graffiti or mural on, cutting out and placing it on this wall. As we go into the next part, I need you to take a moment to really think about line. Think about how expressive they can be, like Basquiat's. I also want you to think about shape, simple shapes you can use to express um, an image and what those shapes could possibly represent for you. So as my wall is either drying or if I'm done with it, I'm just going to put it off to the side. I'm going to start thinking about things that have to do with my community, either things from the past or things now, interactions I have things that I do, things that I see. Now you can do collage or you can draw, even if you have drawing stuff, if you want to collage, that's fine. Um, but when you're collaging, you can find words. Um, you can find actual images of things. You can also find just kind of interesting colors and um, shapes. Make sure if you're cutting out things that you have seen, that you cut kind of closely around them. Here are my interesting colors and shapes. And some things you might not be able to find and you can make them. So like this cat, it's just a bunch of hair, but then I drew a cat on it, cut them out. So see that scrap piece? So words, making things, using simple shapes to make your own objects. But if you're collaging, I want you to come up with a few things that represent community to you. And before you glue down, I want you to organize and overlap and come up with your composition and then glue second. So once you have your composition, you can glue it down. Um, these things represent community to me. See how I overlap things? I also wanted things to be kind of close to each other. And I'm also gonna add a few more kind of like expressive lines, very Basquiat inspired. So that way all these things that are kind of overlapped and piled together have some lines running through them that make them look kind of unified and expressive. So you can see some of my objects are like sunglasses for hanging out in the sun. There's a basketball for sports. There's my cat. Um, there's food. Maybe there's been food gatherings or things that you remember. There's nature. There's the pool. And after you're done, putting all those things together, and like I said, you kind of want to do them closely, you're going to cut off the extra paper so that way it fits onto your wall. So there's my first example. Um, for my second example, if you're drawing, I'm gonna draw similar things so I can show you how I'm gonna organize them. So I'm gonna first by sketching out some shapes for my background very, very, very lightly. So right now I'm gonna draw and overlap my lines with the intention that I'm gonna erase them. So kind of like how in my collage I had those colorful shapes in the background and then put stuff on top of it. These shapes are gonna end up being my background shapes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start drawing 
stuff inside that kind of reminds me of community. So my other side, underneath my sunglasses, there was a book. On this side, I'm going to make a bookshelf. Thinking about the shapes that I need for that. Um, I have a basketball, so on this side I'm going to do a basketball, but I'm also going to do a baseball, and I'm going to do a beach ball. I really like to repeat things or repeat similar shapes around my composition so it feels unified. Um, it makes me feel like that things aren't so random, so if I have different things that are circles, um, I feel that it shows kind of a nice repetition your sun for my sunshine instead of drawing sunglasses. I'm going to draw Reggie, my cat. I feel like animals are a big part of community for me. And I'm going to draw some hearts. So I've drawn simple shapes. I've overlapped. I try to really fill the space. So I'm going to first start by only doing the things that are in my foreground or the front. You can trace them and color them in, but you want to make them stand out from the background. You're also, after you're done tracing, going to take time to erase any lines that were from other objects that will cut through these. So like that heart, I'm going to erase that line inside of it so that way it looks solid and not see-through. Uh, the sun has a few lines in it that I'm going to erase to make it look solid and not see-through. So take some time to draw some objects. You can pause this video and then you're going to trace and color in the objects that are in the front. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do the objects behind it. Okay, so welcome back. I've colored, I've traced. Now for my simple shapes behind, I'm going to carefully trace them and add some expressive lines. I'm gonna do it in crayon only because I feel like that if I only use crayon and don't outline them in a marker. They'll look different enough to still let those things in the foreground or in the front stand out. So I'm using crayon, thinking about that line menu and doing expressive lines. These represent my nature. And then the blue, it could be a pool or it could just represent a certain feeling. I'm gonna cut it out. And then I'm going to go back and do a few more things inside of it just to kind of fill those empty spaces. All right. So something that is on my collage but not on my drawing yet is that I want to add some words. So these are going to kind of overlap. And then I'm going to add some more expressive lines. I feel like Basquiat had a lot of lines that were kind of outlining or we're slightly inside of objects to kind of give them an energy to them. So I'm going to do a few of those. Not too many though, because I don't want it to get too busy. So whichever you did, collage or drawing, it's time to put it on our wall. So take your cutout and put it on top of your wall. And congratulations, you're a mural artist or graffiti, depending on how you look at it. Just like in the book, you've expressed what happens in the community, what makes it special and unique. You have made something for the world to see, so they understand the complexity and the beauty of your community. Remember to take a photo of your artwork. I want to thank you for watching today. Make sure if you need to turn it in, turn it in how your teacher would like you to turn it. And until next time, have fun creating.